we're not too late. We had an extra hour to get ready last night, right? So we're doing all right. It's great to have all of you here uh, with us, whether you're worshiping online or perhaps you'll be watching this later through our YouTube link. Um, we uh, uh, have a lot of announcements uh, for you today, so Carla will start uh, with those, including the handout that was given to you on the way in. Good morning. So we have a lot of announcements. Uh, many of them are in your bulletin and up on the screen. I'll go over um, a few that are well known to us. So if you have joys or concerns, uh, always please send them to Pastor Scott via email or he'll take your text, a phone call. You can always call Helen Henley as well and she'll get that out to our uh, prayer chain. Sunday school is still meeting at 9 a.m. in the parlor. Um, still going through Revelation and then it will kick over into our Advent study here in a couple weeks. Um, do you want to mention anything about that while we're on that subject? Um, so, oh, shoot, uh, Emerson, uh, Elliot, in my computer bag are two sign-up sheets. Can you put them on the clipboards and bring them back out real quick for me? So um, if you signed up for the book last week, you don't sign up again, but I will send the sheets around again. If you were not here and you would like a book to go along with our Advent study, they're about $12 each. Um, and if you sign up, um, I've already ordered some. And so if you sign up, I'll get some more ordered uh, for you. Um, I also sent out this week, so check your email. And if you didn't get it, check your spam folder um, uh, links to the book uh, through Amazon, the Kindle Reader, and through Barnes & Noble. If you do any other kind of e-reader, I gave the book information that you can look it up and purchase it directly yourself. Uh, e-books are nice because they're convenient. You can take them anywhere with you. Um, so if you did not sign up for a book, the clipboard will be coming around. If you've already signed up, you don't have to sign up again. Um, and if you know somebody else that would like a copy, um, you know, uh, like uh, that maybe a shut-in or something like that, we'll be happy to order an extra copy for them. And then to pay for the books, it'll just be on the honor system. So if you get a book, if you would kindly just put an additional $12 in the offering, uh, you don't have to specially mark it, but if you would just do that, we would appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Um, Seven o'clock on Wednesday evenings is our community prayer. Um, please, if you, are, if you don't have a card, if you need a card, please pick up one and so we can all join together in unison to pray for our community on Wednesday night evenings. The craft ministry is um, up and running again uh, from their summer break, but they're looking for ideas. Um, they are looking for ways to help those in need, especially in the upcoming holiday months and into the, to the winter months. Um, so please, if you have ideas, please let Sandy Hingle or Pam Chrisman know, um, and they will get on it. This Sunday, today, um, we are having a reception. Uh, Carla, Sandy right. has more information. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. It's possible. I haven't contacted anybody yet. We'd like to get together like the first week of December. Okay. It'll still be on a Tuesday at 10 o'clock. So first week of December, Tuesday at 10 a.m., correct, to get together for the craft ministry. So if you'd like to join, um, show up then. Yes, sure, of course. Uh, and, today, and oh. real quick, why Sandy's talking? We have eleven <laughs> turkey dinners, or just turkeys? We have eleven boxes to distribute. So, uh, in partnership with Crossroads, uh, they have allocated eleven boxes that includes a turkey and some other stuff in it uh, for our church to do to redistribute uh, to any people who have need. So if you know of people in need, let Sandy Hinkle or myself know. It'll be November 20th when you get those. The Sunday before Thanksgiving. The, okay, so yeah, so I think it's about the 20th. So the Sunday before Thanksgiving, uh, Sandy will pick those up and we'll need to collect those and redistribute those right away because uh, we do not have the capacity to keep 11 turkeys um, uh, on that. So if you have, know of anybody or a family that is in need, uh, that, that could use those turkeys, let us know, and we'll get uh, a list together and make sure that those get distributed. All right, now back to you. Okay. Today, <laughs> this afternoon, uh, from 2 to 4, please um, stop by our, the reception for Howard Seaver um, to share some memories of Howard and uh, offer up your condolences here at the church. We have several upcoming events for the holidays. Uh, November 20th, speaking of that day, we're going to stay after church 
and decorate for Christmas, which is always a fun time. We'll get lunch, pizza or something, and just fellowship and get the church decorated for the holidays, for Advent. And it's a wonderful time. It's a lot of fun. Um, and it doesn't take very long if you have a lot of folks helping out. Um, also note our other upcoming events, December 10th, Lunch with Santa, December 24th, our 11 p.m. Christmas Eve service, and we will have regular Sunday service on December 25th because that's a Sunday. So please mark those on your calendar. Um, the altar flowers today are from Martha Seymour in loving memory of her parents, Walter and Mary Meyer. And last but not least, you should have received a um, handout on the giving tree. Many of you may know what, how these operate, but just something to keep in mind are the dates because uh, I always forget. So number, November 18th is the day you pick up your ornament, and everything has to be back at the church, wrapped and ready to go by December 4th. So keep those dates in mind. If you have any questions, Betsy, are you here organizing this, right? So, so see Betsy, Betsy, raise your hand. See Betsy, Betsy, pick up a flyer, highlight those dates, or put them in your calendar so you don't forget. Okay, that's all I have. All the business. Any other, any other announcements for the good uh, of the church? I have one other point of business. Uh, you know, Sunday after church last Sunday, the uh, disaffiliation committee had a meeting and took a uh, survey. Uh, the results of that survey have been given to me. Uh, and as of right now, the majority of members of the church uh, don't show that they want to disaffiliate. Uh, so where we stand right now... If this is something that you're concerned about or something that uh, you would like to have more discussion about, um, please let me know. Uh, number one, I'll be here after church if you just want to stop by and have a conversation. Uh, but it, if, if it is something um, that is truly on your heart, um, see me and we'll talk about where we go from here. I will be working on putting out a an official response, my personal response to it, um, and uh, I will be getting that out this week. Uh, it'll go out in the form of an email, and then I'll we'll also have hard copies to mail out like we did uh, last time, and to, to let you know where I stand on it uh, and my response uh, to that. So I will be getting that out. So if you have specific questions, I'll stay after church and answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, but also, if you're interested in more, um, uh, let me know, and we will we'll gather and meet together uh, regarding that and go forward. So are there any other announcements for the good of the church? All right, then I will please ask you to stand and join me in our call to worship. Then we will go into our opening prayer and our opening hymn number 419. Please join me in the call to worship. We have heard your call. Draw us nearer, Lord. We look to you with steadfast hope. Draw us nearer, Lord. We delight in the hour we spend with you. Draw us nearer, Lord. Let us feel the depths of your love. Draw us nearer, Lord. Now let us uh, remain standing for hymn number 419, verses 1, 2, and 3. Yes, I will do that as well. I didn't write it in my notes, I'm sorry. Uh, gracious Lord, as we gather here together as your people, uh, let us put aside all of the things that divide us. Uh, Lord, we are in full of a world that, that loves to put people on one side or the other. But today, let us stand in unity in our worship and our love for you. Let us always remember your son, Jesus Christ, and the love that he showed for us by dying on the cross and the victory he gave us by raising from the dead. Lord, we look forward to his uh, triumphal return and the day that we will celebrate in eternity in your presence. Until then, keep us near to you, Lord. Allow us to remember your word, your scriptures, and your love. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us sing our hymn.
each other with a smile and, a, uh, if you feel comfortable, a friendly and warm hug.
And we'll go to our times of joys and concerns. Um, um, uh, Larry, it's good to see you today. And uh, I won't tell you all the bad things Darren's been saying about you. No, you've been in our thoughts and prayers, and it is good to see you. Good to see you, Larry, uh, on that. So that is definitely a joy to see you here today, Larry, um, uh, on that. Um, I know I heard some. Danny, do you have an update on Oz or Tammy? I guess you would have one. Started his journey of visiting uh, the specialist, and uh, they'll be doing a lot of testing and determination of treatments from here. Uh, so just continue prayers. Uh, Patty's John getting better? We see you here today, but not with John. He's getting much better, thank you. Okay, so John is continuing to improve, so continue prayers there. Uh, continue your prayers for Griff. Uh, he is now uh, in a rehab facility. Um, and um, there's always roadblocks and hiccups along the way, and pray for Jeannie as she deals with those, because it's not always a fun time, and, uh, and if you've been in that situation, sometimes you have to be the advocate and be firm and pushy, and you don't always like it, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do, so continue prayers uh, for Griff and, uh, and Jeannie, of course, uh, on that, so do we have any other uh, updates or uh, new joys or concerns to share today? Yes, Tammy? My joy is checking in where I was two weeks post-op knee replacement. Uh, the so. bad news is keep me in your prayers. He's going to go for another one next month. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, so you've set the bar pretty high now, Chuck, so they, they expect the expect the rebound uh, on that, so... We're glad to, glad to hear that uh, things are, are going so well for you, Chuck. Uh, and uh, so we appreciate that. Uh, Darren. Uh, just a couple of celebrations. We were in church last week because we were in Charleston, South Carolina, celebrating our 20 year anniversary. And yesterday, um, most of you know my grandma Chiswick, we had a 100th uh, birthday party celebration out in Westchester. She actually turns 100. Tuesday of this week, so we had a big party. There was about 75 people there, so she told me to tell everybody hello, and uh, Shirley Govich was there, uh, and she also uh, said to pass along uh, hellos as well. Okay, so uh, Darren and Kim uh, Steinman celebrated 20 years of marriage, so congratulations to you youngins. We can say that. Uh, and uh, also Mary Chiswick, um, uh, who was a, a member of this church for a long time, she turned 100, and uh, so celebrating that. And also uh, uh, Darren got to see Shirley Gobich, and she passed on uh, her hellos as well, because uh, she's living up in the Westchester area as well, and it's very hard. Uh, Bev and then Mindy. Um, here's my grandson, Stephen. Has a lump on his spine that's going to look into tomorrow. It is a result of a racing accident. So, Satan was in uh, as a result of a racing accident, has a lump on his spine, and he's going in for test tomorrow uh, for that. Uh, so, uh, we'll hope that it's something acute and treatable uh, from there. Mindy. My sister, they did find several places that are cancerous, but they're going to treat it with a shot once every 28 days, something I've not heard of. And uh, they're not going to do surgery, they're not going to do uh, chemo, and they're not going to do radiation. So they are going to do a, what they call a PET scan. I think it points out just cancer. In a body, mm -hmm. 
And so we'll know a little more after that, but she still needs your prayers. Her so, spirits are up, though. She's she felt like a load's been lifted just knowing that it's a slow-moving cancer that is not just taking over her kidneys or her lungs or her breasts or her pancreas or anything. It's just she may have had it for a long, long time, they said. Okay. So Mindy's sister, Nancy, they, she's been diagnosed with a slow-growing cancer. Um, and they're going to give her uh, some kind of new shot therapy where she gets a, a shot every 28 days and um, they're not going to do cancer chemo, uh, chemo or radiation treatments at this time but she'll be getting some PET scans and um, other things going forward but it's still a struggle but at least it's not something rapid that they, they're scared of right now so that is good news and bad news at the same time uh, others Martha My sister-in-law, Joanne, uh, we thought she was sort of doing better, but she has been falling a lot recently and now in and out of the hospital. They've decided she needs a pacemaker, but they're not doing it until December. So your sister-in-law, Joanne, uh, is going to need a pacemaker in January. Uh, well, she needs it now, but she's not going to get it till January, December. But it's going to be a while, so just prayers for... Martha's sister-in-law as she waits for her pacemaker and that procedure. Don't? Do we have pictures for trunk or treat? Oh, we do have pictures for trunk or treat, and I forgot about that. So a joy, and this is a joy to share. Um, we got a couple slides of some of it, and you can see, uh, I think, uh, on the previous slide, uh, Joyce is the back of her van, and we actually had several kids uh, come through. We had... Uh, games and stuff inside. We had uh, candy stations inside, and we had some people who braved the rain, and magically it kind of disappeared at the right time. And uh, so we didn't get uh, completely drenched. And uh, so it was an actual real blessing, and it was amazing uh, just to see the families and the kids. Some people walked here, some people drove in, and, and uh, so it was a, a wonderful opportunity for people to come in and see our church. Um, and then we had uh, one completely unexpected blessing. What was his name again, Larry? It was uh, Leiner, uh, Mark Leiner. Mike Leiner? And Dr. Leiner's son, younger son. And, uh, but anyways, he was in town from New York. He's an architect, and he was doing a presentation at UC. And so uh, that afternoon, he went on a nostalgia drive through the old town and by where his house used to be down the road here. It's now... A housing development it used to be a farm and uh, I guess his dad was a vet tech local here um, and uh, he saw that the church was open and he wanted to come in and see the old church and sit in the front pew and he uh, said a prayer for his parents and but it was a real joy and a real blessing for him that he got to experience because we were bold enough to open up our doors for trunk or treat so something completely unexpected happened and it's just a way for us to see that when we walk in obedience with God and we step out in faith, what God will do for us. And, and so many lives were blessed uh, because of the efforts of you. Uh, so thank you to all of those who made that happen, whether you simply donated candy or you donated your time or you helped one of the people help put all of this together. So thank you uh, for all of that. The trunk or treat was uh, absolutely a joy uh, on that. And uh, we got to see Danny's other half. Uh, as a Phantom of the Opera, that was a lot of fun. Uh, so, but we had a good time uh, with it all, and it was fun, fun. So, any other joys and concerns to share? Yes, Danny. One more. I thought Darren would share this. It's nice to see Larry here today. Yeah. Yes, Larry. Yes, it is. It, it is nice to see Larry here today. So, uh, yes. I voted early yesterday, so I encourage everybody to go vote. So it is uh, voting week, so you have between now and Tuesday to uh, do your vote. If you want to avoid crowds, you can go to your board of elections uh, tomorrow and vote early, or uh, just get up like I do at 6 o'clock in the morning when nobody else is there, or 6.30 whenever they open, and uh, go and, and uh, be able to vote. Uh, but uh, we should be grateful uh, that we have that opportunity to uh, have our voices heard. So make sure uh, you put thought into it. Please put a lot of thought and prayer into what, what you vote and how you vote. 
uh, because there are things that will affect uh, us and our country for a long time to come on how we do that. So, any other joys and concerns? All right, let's be together uh, in prayer. And as always, we'll conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Uh, Almighty Heavenly Father, we just love to see how you are working in amongst the people of this church. Lord, we thank you for those who have been faithful and answered your calling. And Lord, there's no two gift or contribution that is too small for this church. Uh, but we see even in small steps of faith, we see your great hand at work. And Lord, we thank you for the faith and, and what you have done. Uh, Lord, uh, we thank you for some of the great healings and miracles that you have done in our presence. Uh, Lord, we thank you uh, for those who have been ill and are able to come back to church. Uh, we thank you for uh, those who uh, continue to reach out and love those and, and visit with those who are shut in and serve them in different ways. Uh, Lord, we thank you for our doors that will be open uh, today for the community to come in and celebrate Howard Seaver and the work that has gone into that. And Lord, uh, as uh, uh, we continue uh, to follow you, we know that uh, we live in a world of trouble. We live in a world of chaos. We live in a world of sickness and illness. Uh, but in all things, we know we share in your final victory. So allow us to be a, a beacon of light and hope for all those uh, that are in desperation and Lord, may in our prayers we always be uh, looking for your will and your glory so that even if our prayers are not answered in the way we want them, that we will see how you are working and how you are using us uh, so that others can come to know uh, Christ uh, through our witness. Lord, as we come together in, in bold uh, unity, uh, we say the prayer that your, your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now hear the word of God. Scripture readings this morning begin in Genesis 6, verses 9 through 22, and go into Hebrews. Hear the words from Genesis. These are the descendants of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God, and Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw that the earth was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Now I am going to destroy them along with the earth. Make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out, out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. Its width, 50 cubits. And its height, 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above and put, a, put the door of the ark on its side. Make it lower, make, make it with lower, second, and third depth. <clears throat> For my part, I'm going to bring a flood of waters on the earth to destroy from under the heaven all flesh in which, the, in which is breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark, to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds according to their kinds, of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind. Two of every kind shall come in to you to keep them alive. Also take with you every kind of food that is eaten and store it up, and it shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this, he did all that God commanded him. Moving into Hebrews 11 verses one through three, seven and 39. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen is, was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Noah warned by God about events as yet unseen, respected the warning, and built an ark to save his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir to the righteousness that is in accordance with faith. 
Yet all these, though they were commend, commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now if the ushers would come forward for our offering this morning. Simply put, thank you. Thank you for the abundant blessings that you have given to us. And we simply ask you to receive what we have given to you. May it be honorable to you. May you recognize the hearts by which it has been given. Lord, we ask your hand to, be, uh, to touch what has been given so that it may be multiplied in ways that beyond our expectations. Lead us and guide us in all that we do and the use of these gifts. For it is in your name, your son's name, and the name of the Holy Spirit we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for our next hymn, hymn number 463, Lord, Speak to Me.
may be seated. Well, welcome to week one of three of our spinoff series called By Faith. This three-week series has its basis in the book of Hebrews. So there are some verses over the next uh, two weeks that you're going to hear over and over again. So maybe you'll know them after three weeks. And as you have guessed, our key word is faith. What is faith? We don't know who the author for sure of the book of Hebrews is. For a long time, it was attributed to the Apostle Paul, but there may be evidence that he was not the writer, and the writer is unknown. But either way, the author of the book of Hebrews defines it this way, from Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We live in a world of prove it to me. If someone makes any kind of claim, we want proof for ourselves. If a sports team claims to be the best, they have to go and prove it on the field, don't they? If a product claims to be the best, often they will show surveys to prove that people prefer their product. If a medicine claims to treat an illness, there must be proof that it works. And we must like that phrase, doctor recommended. Because, well, if a doctor recommended it, it must work. It must be safe. But remember, at one time, other things were doctor recommended too. Anybody remember ads like these? More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. I listen to radio classics all the time and talk about how the menthol opens up your lungs and makes everything better. Things sure have changed, haven't they? And how about these phrases? A recent study shows. A recent poll shows. And here are some recent headlines in the news. I just took these straight off at some headlines in the news feed. Recent study shows youth vote critical to midterm election. Labeling women as emotional undermines their credibility, new study shows. Study shows a rise in blood pressure during COVID-19. No kidding. GOP voters motivated to vote in midterm election, new poll indicates. And 2022 Senate swing states what the latest polls show. And these news stories are validated by statistics, aren't they? I personally like this meme. A new study shows we can get you to believe anything as long as we say a new study shows before whatever we say. But isn't that true? We pick up these headlines and we pick up these stats and we don't even know what they mean or who conducted them or how they were done. And we believe them because somebody did a study. And we don't know about the bias. We don't know about the intent. We don't know about the sample size. We don't know anything other than a study or a poll was conducted. Well, I know a lot of people, I don't care what their opinion is because they're not very bright. So I don't believe polls. I don't like them. But you know, that is not what Christianity is about. Our religion is not based on facts, study polls, or recommendations. We are to indeed live by faith. We call it the Christian faith for a reason. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Now, we have a lot of answers in our scriptures, but we don't have all the answers. It takes a measure of faith. Jesus told a parable in Luke 16 that some people will never believe no matter how much proof there is. There was a parable he told about Lazarus and the rich man. And the rich man was in hell and said, hey, can you send somebody back 
somebody from the dead show up as an apparition and tell my brothers and sisters about things? And this is what Jesus said. He said to them, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Basically, Jesus said, you have all the proof you need in the scriptures. One more sign or one more miracle, or even if a person comes from back from the dead to tell us, yes, heaven is real, it still won't be enough proof for some people. Because in the end, it takes a measure of faith. And in Hebrews chapter 11, we find many people who didn't have the written scriptures. Their faith was based on oral traditions and their experience with God. And Hebrews uh, goes on to say, this is what the ancients were commended for. They had faith when there was little evidence to have faith. Noah will be the focus of our sermon on faith today. Noah lived long before Abraham and Moses, long before there was a written history. Noah only had oral traditions, and in verse 3, we see that like Noah, by faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. The story of creation, the story of Adam and Eve, the story of the fall was passed down to Noah, and Noah believed it by faith. And I just want to make mention here that by faith, I believe in creation. There's a lot of people right now, I'm telling you, there are scholars in our university, scholars preaching today, that want you to believe that the story of creation is an allegorical story just to teach us a lesson. There was no real Adam. There was no real Eve. There was no Noah. There was no Jonah. There was no Job. They're just stories. Well, I'm here to tell you the author of Hebrews says, by faith we understand the universe was formed at God's command. The Bible says, not just in Genesis, but in Psalms, through Jesus, through the author of Hebrews, we see that God formed the universe. And Noah also received oral traditions about Cain and Abel, about faithfulness to God, about offerings to God, and how sin brought about jealousy, anger, and revenge. It tells us in verse 4, by faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. So the author is saying, look, these traditions, these oral teachings were given to us. We learn from the fall. We learn from Cain and Abel. We learn about God. We learn about sin. All of this is in front of us. And it was Noah's faith that prompted him to live differently in the world. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in a holy fear, built an ark to save his family. Now, the word fear, and I talked with Gene about this a couple weeks ago, the word fear does not mean like, ooh, I'm scared of the dark. Fear means reverence, in holy reverence, in holy awe, and in, 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 in thought about the greatness of God, he built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. So let us turn to the actual story to get a better appreciation of what they're saying in Hebrews. Let's go to Genesis uh, 6, 9. He says, this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Scriptures give us a good picture of who Noah was, especially among the people of his time. And what kind of world did Noah live in? 
Verse 5 says, The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of thought of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. And jumping down to verse 11, again it says, Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. See, our God is holy. Our God is pure. Our God is light, and in Him is no darkness or evil. And I want you to focus in on this phrase, corrupt in God's sight. The world was doing what it wanted and what it thought was right. What they were doing was corrupt in God's sight. God is the final determination of what is sin. It doesn't matter what we want, what we feel, or what we think. It is all about defining what is corrupt in God's sight. And when God sees how corrupt, how evil, and how violent the world became because of sin, God was so disturbed that he regretted that he made human beings. But in all of this, there was hope. Verse 8 says, But Noah found favor in the eyes of God. And why? Because in verse 9 it says, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Like I said before, Noah only had oral traditions that was passed down from one generation to the next generation to his generation. He didn't have a Bible to turn to. He didn't have a quick little devotional guide to read a quick verse every day. He didn't have a church or denomination. He didn't have a preacher preaching at him every Sunday. He didn't have Sunday school, vacation, Bible school, youth group, or confirmation. But Noah knew God. Noah had faith in God. And Noah lived his life in a way that pleased God and not the world. The world was living without rules. The world was living in total freedom. And instead of doing what was corrupt in God's sight, he walked faithfully with, his, with God. And in his faith, Noah was asked to do more than just keep living righteously. Now, Noah lived by faith. He was righteous. I mean, wasn't that alone pretty good? Wasn't that enough? Think about just how hard it was to be good in a world that was corrupt. He couldn't even open up his Bible and say, see, see this verse right here? He didn't have that. That alone was a test. That alone was difficult. Being faithful and righteous sure seems like it should have been enough, don't you think? Boy, Noah, you're doing pretty good. Keep it up. Good job, Noah. But that wasn't enough. God called him to do the unthinkable. Verse 14, so make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it, and coat it with pitch inside and out, and this is how you are to build it. And he goes on and gives him a long list of very specific details. How many floors, how big, how wide, how everything. And then on top of it, not only do you need to build this big ark, you got to go gather all the animals. Oh, and you need to gather enough food to feed all of them and yourself. Because do you know how long the flood actually lasted? 150 days. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights, but then they were out on the water for 150 days. How much food do you need to gather to feed an ark full of animals for 150 days? Now, this next slide is a picture of the Ark Encounter in Kentucky. Now, when we took a picture of our boys, I probably should have used our picture. Our boys were about that big in the picture. 
It's a full-scale replica of the ark as described in the Bible. Now, just imagine, this replica took six years using over 1,000 craftsmen and modern machines to build. Today, six years and over 1,000 people and modern cranes and, and equipment and bulldozers and all of that stuff and tools so to Noah, when God gave him these instructions, he must have seen that this was the unthinkable. God, we've never seen a boat this big. We've never seen anything like this. What are you talking about? This is impossible. Isn't that what most of us would say? <laughs> yeah, good luck on that one, God. That's impossible. I ain't doing that. Yet through his faith, Noah did what God commanded of him now we don't know how long it took we don't even know how he even accomplished it some scholars guess that from the time he got the announcement to the age of his kids to be married and different things they estimated it it probably took at least 75 years for him to build and we don't know what it cost Noah, just imagine the resources alone that he had to use to collect that much lumber. That's a lot of wood. I'm sorry, but to cut down and drag and hewn and shape and saw all of that? But in the end, Noah was not only righteous, he was faithful, and he put his time and effort into doing what God commanded him to do. All he knew, it was coming. He didn't know when, but it was coming. There was a flood, and he needed to be faithful and just keep building and building and building and building. And we also don't know he could have had the boat done and said, okay, it's done. Is it going to start raining today? Okay, uh, tomorrow, right? Nope, tomorrow, right? Could you imagine his wife saying, you spent all this time building the boat and we're not leaving on this trip? We don't know, but we do know he was faithful and he remained righteous and he did what God commanded him to do. And there's another verse that we'll probably visit more than once in the next two weeks. James chapter 2. My favorite passage in the Bible says, you see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. They think that speaks volumes, doesn't it? A person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. So here's a couple questions for you. How are you living in this world? Are you living by God's standards or the world's standards? Are you just trying to survive and be good? Are you putting your faith into action? And question number two, and I think this is probably the most difficult one, because I think a lot of us say, I'm doing pretty good, taking care of myself and being nice and being kind and going to church and doing my righteousness part. But question number two is, are you willing to do the unthinkable? Are you willing to step out in faith and do something that is hard and difficult? Because we live in a very tough world right now. We live in a world when the authority of the Bible is being diminished. When the world, we live in a world where God's standards are called outdated or archaic. We live in a world where what was once considered immoral is not only accepted, it is now celebrated. And I think just like Noah, we are being called to do the unthinkable. 
I think we are called to do what we think is impossible. I think we're being called to do what may be uncomfortable. I think God has an ark calling for us. See, the ark was a symbol for salvation from the coming destruction. And if you were in our class for Revelation, you would know that there is a final judgment coming. The world as we know it will be destroyed. This earth one day is going to be gone. And through the church, we are to bring the good news of Jesus Christ. Through the church, we must share the news of sin and salvation. We are to share about God and God's righteousness. For Noah, salvation was limited to him, his sons, and their wives. But this time, the good news, the salvation we share is available for all. But make no mistake, just as in the time of Noah, the unrighteous will not be saved. From Revelations, he said, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all of this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. And if you come to Revelation, you're going to hear about the beautiful heaven God is prepared for us. A beautiful place where there is no sin, there's only light from God. Where there's no sickness, no anger, no malice, no anything. All our tears are wiped away, all the evil is gone. It's a beautiful and glorious place. but it's for those who have come and drank from the water, those who have salvation through Jesus Christ, those who are victorious will inherit this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But here comes the big but. Because in every good promise, there's always the but, right? But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. That, my friends, is a reality of what is coming. Now, we have a mission as God's church. We are to build a church that leads people to salvation in Christ. It's not alone for us to sit back and just show up and say everything's okay, let's just keep everything the way it is, and as long as I got myself taken care of, that's good. I'm good. I get to tell them what's right. But was it the author?
in the end, I'm telling you, it comes down to your righteousness, your faith, and your faith. And as someone told me earlier today, one day I'm going to stand before God. And I will be judged for every word that comes out of my mouth. I will be judged for every action I took or did. And I think we need to really think about who we are. Because we have a God that's not love. We have a God And it wasn't something that he said, go get it and hold on to it and wait for the end. He said, go get it, experience it, live it, and share it. That's the people we are called to be. No greater love was shown than by God. He sent his own son.
Lord, forgive us for the times that we have failed to ask for your name. Forgive us for the times that we have not shared in your wonderful good news with you. Lord, we know you are faithful in God. We know you genuinely repent and confess your people. You don't need to do this. And through God's promises and faith in his word, I proclaim that you are his redeemed Lord, in our lifetime, this is one of the hardest moments in our church history. But Lord, I know through faith in you. You have promised eternal victory, and I have faith in your holy name. Lord, be with these hours and all that we do, that we may have a yearning to love you and serve you. This is our prayer today. Those who and sing our closing hymn, uh, hymn number 467, Trust and Obey.
I think that song sums up what we learned today. We need to have faith in God and we need to be obedient to his calling. And my prayer is this, that you seriously and prayerfully consider where you stand with God and you prayerfully and consider where God wants to lead you. Because God may be calling you to do the unthinkable. God may be calling you to do your part to build the ark. To provide a means of salvation for all who will enter in. And let us not forget that those who do not accept that salvation have an eternity the same as we have an eternity. It's just going to be in a different place. And as for me, I want as many people on that ark God wants me to build. I don't want any loved one, any friend, and quite honestly, I don't want anybody to have to live that eternity. I want them to share in the promises that I have. And I'm going to continue to do my part And sometimes that means I bring a hammer. Sometimes that means I bring a saw. And sometimes that means I take time and care and work on the details. And each of us have a part in that art building. The question is, will you choose to be a part of it? Let us leave here now and consider the faith of Noah. And may we be inspired to grab that faith and live for God and accomplish the unthinkable. Leave here now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.